The V2 shock from Associated is long overdue and it's here. We're going to go through and build it and uh, see uh, if we can get you up to speed on a couple things. One other thing is when you build your shock, there's a B spacer uh, it, that goes in between the two O-rings. When you build this, you want to build it and see if there's any stiction. If there is, you might want to take your emery board and, and sand this down a little bit, but all the ones I've built seem to be money, so shouldn't be a problem. First, start off with your green, green slime from Factory Team. Do a little bit in there. Load that in. B, B spacer. Some of the guys are just using shock uh, oil as well. So, it, you know, three different guys, three different ways to build shocks. This is just how I do it. Then I take the cap and I screw it three quarters of the way on. Leave it open so I'm not putting any load on the O-rings. This way the shaft can pass through. Like I say, take uh, some shock oil, put it on the threads. That way it passes through. Threads are rough and you left the end cap loose so you should be able to slide right through the, through the old O-rings. It's nice and free. Wipe the excess off. Then cinch down your cap. That seems to be nice. Nice and free. That's what you want. Just like your arms and caster blocks and spindles, you want everything to be free. Also you want to take I use a pair of needle nose. This one has teeth and then it's a flat surface. I use that on the shaft. Just make sure you get a good pinch on it. There is some aftermarket companies that make shock tools. This is just my own shock tool. Tighten the shock rod end down and just get it to where it's snug. You don't want to over tighten it. The shaft will go through, crush the ball, and then it won't work properly. Next, we're going to fill the shock body up. Take our Lucas Oil AE. I'm going to fill this up three quarters of the way. What you've got is the oil in there. You're going to run the, sh the piston up slowly and then pull it down and I spin it a little bit. And you should see some air bubbles coming out of there. Yep. Maybe you're not seeing them, but I am. One thing is the pros will build their shocks and then fill them and let them sit in a, in a car stand or you will do one, you fill it up and then fill up the other three. Let them sit. If you're racing outdoors, go outside and build your shocks. You want to be in the temperature or the outside ambient air temperature uh, that the shock is going to be working at. So if you're in a hotel room, don't do it in the hotel room. You're not racing there do it outside. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up all the way. One thing I do is fill it up and I overfill it. I make a dome at the top. Some guys will fill up the cap. I think this works a little bit neater, especially with the bleeder hole in the cap. We've got that cinch down. Take and slowly compress the shaft up into the body. Don't go too crazy. You want to go slow. And there comes some oil. Run it all the way out. Nice and neat. Wipe off the excess. The bleeder hole makes everything nice and easy. Okay, now we're going to take our screw, our factory team wrench. We're going to run the screw in. And this is going into a plastic cap. You definitely don't want to over tighten this. Just get it snug. Wipe off the excess. We're going to pump it a couple times. And there is a thing where you get too much oil in here and it'll hydrolock. So you'd push the shaft up and that much would be exposed and it's too much oil. You want it to go all the way in. So we're going to pump it a few more times. Hold it out, hold the shaft up, and then undo the set screw and bleed it for the last time. See if anything comes out. Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit comes out. Nothing too crazy unless you feel it locked up. 
We're gonna reinsert. Make sure you hold the shaft up inside the shock body. Don't pull it down. Do this all in one motion. And that is how to build your V2 shock from Team Associated.